Hey guys, Jared Beckwith here. I'm a registered EEG technologist, and in today's video, we're gonna look at a patient who's 41 years old, and they have a history of recurrent astrocytoma. Now what that is, is a brain tumor, essentially. You've got the astrocyte cells, they're multiplying uncontrollably, and it seems this patient has had a resection two times, so despite having two resections, they're still having increasing seizures. Now, they came into the hospital, had their EEG done. Now it's continuously low voltage. We're gonna go through the EEG in a second. And the doctor said, nearly continuous T4 spike in slow wave activity. Now, what could this be coming from? Well, the obvious answer is the tumor in the right hemisphere lines up with the continuous T4 spike in slow wave activity. Now T4, we're gonna be wanna look around this area when we look through the EEG. So if you're reading a patient's history and you kind of already know what to expect, where the tumor is, where the spike in wave activity is to be found, it can really help make your viewing of an EEG more efficient. Now it says, it looks like he has focal seizures in that T4 area, but also generalized tonic-clonic seizures. So it's possible he has epileptic activity that starts out in the T4 area and then just spreads to the entire brain and he has those generalized tonic-clonic big seizures. Um, so it looks like a total of 27 spells. So yeah, this is a serious case. And Let's see, abnormal EEG due to frequent epileptiform discharges, which correlated with seizure activity. Nearly continuous T4 spike wave. So we're gonna go through and check that out. But I found a mistake in the clinical correlation. It says, demonstrates status epilepticus, which includes generalized tonic-clonic and complex partial epilepsy, all good for now, but it says the left temporal continuous spike wave activity. But we know from the tumor location in the right hemisphere and its T4 spike wave discharges right hemisphere, it looks like the doctor just made a typo uh, putting left temporal. So let's go through and check out the EEG for ourselves. Now scrolling through this EEG, we can see uh, a little bit of muscle tension here, probably in the forehead. And we've got some really, really low amplitude slowing in this patient. And but I haven't seen any epileptic activity yet. Now, these movements in the frontal leads, that's most likely some, some eye movements from the patient. As we scroll on, yep, looks like an eye blink type movement and the patient must be pretty relaxed maybe a little tension in their forehead but otherwise pretty relaxed laying in bed most likely and as we scroll on to the end of the clip we can start to see something interesting let's see if we can get some of that epileptic activity so here is this the epileptic active no this is probably some movement uh, touching the wires, electrode pop artifact. Nothing to be concerned of, but if we look down on the other side, we can see somewhat sharp activity start to originate in the right temporal region around T4. We can see it's starting to build up. That's a good sign of a seizure. If something slowly builds up and persists, you can say, oh, that was probably a seizure and not uh, just noise. So we have this spiky activity here in the right temporal region. And if we compare it to the left temporal region, it's essentially low amplitude, flat, and we have a little bit of muscle noise superimposed on the brain activity. And you can tell this looks definitely different than this right here. So it's, it's good to compare both the right hemisphere in this case where the patient has their tumor. This is why this is the uh, probably the most important place to look for seizure onset in this patient specifically and compare it to the left temporal region. Pretty cool. 
that's that's a lot of what EEG is about. It's about comparing the left and the right sides of the brain. It's good. We we hook up the whole brain. In this case, even T1 and T2. I like those extra electrodes, T1 and T2, because it allows you to get more of the temporal lobe recorded. And that's where many seizures are found. And in this case, this is probably where the tumor is. Now here, this is a electrode artifact, a FP2. So probably he's touching his forehead or something like that, or, or just movement. And we have the epileptic activity, continue on at T4 compared to the other side, which doesn't have any. And we come to the end of this clip. So pretty interesting guys. We got to see a patient who has astrocytoma, two resections, and they continue to have seizure activity. Uh, the one thing we didn't see in the actual EEG part is that this patient, they actually have generalized tonic-clonic seizures as well. So the epileptic, epileptic activity generalizes sometimes. That's their big generalized tonic-clonic events. And they also have these uh, more subtle right temporal seizures as well. Thank you guys for watching. If you need to prep for your EEG board exam, go to eegboardprep.com. Free demo questions to test out. It's the best way to prepare. And also if you want your own EEG machine to record your sleep, meditation, or you even want to connect your brain to your computer, check it out on my website, jaredbeckwith.com. Thank you all for watching and I will see you guys on the next video.